Good morning. In today's practice, you'll need a blanket to sit on and maybe a cushion to sit up onto and two blocks. And if you don't have blocks, you can use books or something that's about the height of a yoga block. Let's go ahead and start sitting down. If you find that your lower back is kind of stiff today, or if you're generally just kind of in a round posture, elevate your hips, maybe sit up on a block or sit up onto a cushion. I like to do it especially first thing in the morning because my hips are kind of tight and my sacrum is a little bit stiff. So it's always a good idea to kind of prop yourself up. And closing your eyes, and take a few moments to check in with how you're feeling today. And bringing one of your hands onto your heart. And if you have an intention that you'd like to bring in today, or maybe you're offering your practice to another being, go ahead and take the next several moments to be intentional as we start our practice. And deepening your breath. And I invite you to bring in that ujjayi, that oceanic sounding breath. Narrow the throat, becoming a little more intentional with every breath that you do take. And lightly opening up your eyes. Take your hands out onto your knees. Activate your feet. Kind of pull the toes back towards the tops of your feet. And start with warming up with some undulation. Slowly start to circle your shoulders. Circling the ribs. Slowly making your way down towards your hips. Going in a direction with your feet active, pay attention now down into your feet as your feet activate. Maybe a little bit of a squeeze in through your legs. Feel how these shifts happen in your knees, up into your pelvis, right around piriformis, glutes, sit bones around your low belly and your back, making your way up to your ribs with your focus, the chest arcing through, kind of like when we do cat-cow, and when you're coming back, rounding in the shoulders like cat. You can keep going for a few moments. The breath is our lubrication, that motion is lotion. Moving your body, soft elbows, maybe a little bit of that feeling of creating a fulcrum by pressing down into your hands. Slowly kind of teasing out that stiffness, that tightness. And then start to come around in the opposite direction. I was just saying to one of our yoginis that I've been gardening a lot the past couple of days and I can really feel that in my body. All that squatting and kneeling and pulling. This practice would be really good if you're just starting your practice up again or if you're a gardener like me and you really want to prepare for gardening or maybe do this after. All the way around. And 
maybe two or three more circles. Undulate away. You find a specific area in your body that you're like, oh, you just want to lean into or come into a little bit more in depth. I'm going to tease that out. And then sitting back up, real tall. Changing out the crossing in your legs. I'm going to tuck the other one in. And then sit up tall, lifting up through your chest. Interlace your fingers and press the outside of your wrist forward, chest up, shoulders down, and take a few breaths stretching out your wrist. So hopefully you'll feel this right at the top of the wrist towards your elbows. Intentional breathing. And then change the flip of your hands, press your palms forward. Chest stays up, shoulders relaxing down, maybe even move your head a little bit so that your neck can start to warm up too. Be like a little bobblehead. <laughs> and then exhale, release, bending at the elbows. And then circle, looping your shoulders up, back and around. Coming into a spinal twist, turn your hips to the right and catch your right leg with your left hand. Your right hand comes back on the floor behind you. Spiraling around, start looking over to the right. Close your eyes and then slide your eyes to the right. That helps to get more of those top neck vertebrae. Take your time with each breath. Feel yourself absorbing the inhale. And when you exhale, pull your belly towards your spine. When you exhale, come on back into neutral and take a moment to feel. And changing your leg position so your other shin is forward, keeping your feet active. And then take your left hand out in front of you, your fingers facing up, and your opposite hand gently pulls the fingers towards the top of the wrist or towards the top of the elbow. Spread your left thumb, so take it from being tucked in to opening it up. A lot of these stretches I also do, I play guitar. And I really love doing this before I practice. And also like the weeding in the garden, all that pulling and that gripping. Or if you're an artist, really good to warm up your hands this way or to stretch out your hands after you've been doing whatever you're practicing. And then to the other hand, reach out and take the fingers, pulling back, spreading your left or your right thumb out. Chest lifts up, so really focus in also on that posture. And then release and then press your fingers down and kind of curl the fingers back towards the inside of your elbow or towards your chest. Do you feel that stretch pretty big? Yeah. 
I love that. And then release and do a few more shoulder shrugs. Sometimes when we have our hands out for a while, our shoulders start to get tight again. Oh, back and around, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> and then lifting up tall spinal twist, exhale, twist to your left. Right hand catches at the thigh or knee. Meditating on the breath. When you breathe in, feel your ribs start to open up. Kind of like those curly wings. And when you breathe out, pull your belly towards your spine. Slide your eyes to the left, close your eyes, look all the way inside of your skull to the left. And exhale, come on back into neutral. Take a moment to feel. And changing out your legs one more time. And then circling your hands, make a fist and just loop them around. And then start to move your hands more out towards the sides of you. Elbows are soft, little bend there. And then you can start to add the shoulders if you'd like, kind of undulate through the arms and the shoulders. Could we just strengthen and heat up your arms and your shoulders? If you have any kind of pinching, adjust how you're moving until you're out of pain in the shoulders or the wrists or really any part of you. And then reaching out, spread your fingers and then a few more of those circles. Almost like you're washing the sides of the room. Cleaning up your act. <laughs> Go around the other way. And then release and go back into a little more of that upper body undulation. And maybe you want to get a little creative, but please do not hurt yourself when you get creative. A little morning boogie. And then if you're perched up onto a block, go ahead and take that out. If you're on the blanket, scoot kind of towards the front edge of your blanket. Coming into a side stretch, bring your right leg out to the side. Flexing your foot, so pull the toes towards the knee. And you want to sit up onto something if you tend to round, just like we started the practice, how I was describing if you're kind of hanging into your low back. Lift up, that's why sitting on the front edge of a blanket will be really, really helpful. Right hand to the inside of the knee and raise your left arm up. Keep this lift and this opening in your chest, slide over to the right. Only coming over as far as you can maintain this lift in your chest, opening up your left side. Lateral stretches like the one we're in are really good to do every day. Very rarely do we stretch out the sides of our body unless we intentionally do so. It's so good. It'll also help you breathe deeper because the way it opens up these intercostal muscles, the spaces between your ribs. And then press down with your legs to come on up and release and take another moment, feel. 
I can feel like the whole left side of me, all that flow and that warmth coming in. And then changing out your legs or having another sip of tea or coffee. <laughs> Bringing your left leg out. And then take your left hand a little bit to the inside of the knee. Raise your right arm up. Get as tall as you can, lift up. And then exhale, sliding, tipping over to your left. Staying here and really enjoy your breath. Pressing through your legs, breathe in, come on up. And take a moment. And then grab your blocks. Let's come over onto your hands and your knees. Take the blocks under your hands. I love practicing cat-cow with my hands on the blocks. It takes some of the pressure off of my hands and my wrists. And it's just a different way to get into some of those places in your spine and in your back ribs. So if you don't have blocks, you can certainly put your hands on the floor. If you do have the blocks, kind of grip the block like you're going to pick it up. Grip that with your fingertips. And so another way to strengthen the wrists. Knees underneath your hips, these blocks right underneath your shoulders. Cat cow. Inhale, release the chest down, shoulders back, tail up, chin up. And exhale, press down, pulling in your belly. Give a little bit of a squeeze between your knees so your low back and your sacrum open up. Inhale, open your chest, shoulders back. Exhale, round your back. And continue to feel this gentle rocking, this motion and this movement opening up the spine. Feeling how it stretches right in between your shoulder blades and through your chest, your rib cage. Bringing your spine back into neutral. Keep your belly in. I didn't mention this earlier, but you may want to have a blanket underneath your knees here too. Coming into a lizard pose. Take your blocks or your hands over to the left side of your mat. Pull in your abs and then extend your right leg out. So as your right leg goes out, kind of like when we do opposite arm leg extension, Reach it out and give that a moment. Your belly pulled in and you're pressing down into the blocks. And then bring this right knee in and through into a lunge shape. Then reset the blocks to the inside of your right foot. The left knee comes back, so tuck the toes under and adjust the left knee back. So now we're coming into that lizard shape. And the right knee kind of hugs in, hugging towards your right elbow or your right shoulder. So at any time, if your wrists get really tired, you can make fists and kind of push those, the knuckle part of your fist, kind of where you would wear a ring, press that down. That's another good way to create space. 
And if at any time you wanna go a little bit deeper, lift your hips a little bit and set your forearms down on the blocks. And you can choose the height of the block depending on how deep you wanna go or how you wanna come out of it a little bit. Your right knee continues to hug in towards your armpit and your shoulder. Relaxing your neck, letting your head fall down towards the floor, towards the mat. At any time, you can keep readjusting this back knee to make it deeper or to back out of it. Coming up onto your hands again, if you're down low, bring those blocks back over to the left. And then bring your right knee back in underneath you. Take the blocks over to the right. There you go. Pull in your belly, keep it lifted in towards the spine for support. And then lean forward a little bit, pick up your left leg and reach your left leg back. Long energy down through your foot. So press through that left foot, squeezing your glutes just a little bit. This is a great way to come into lunges too. Sometimes when you're really stiff in the hips, bringing your legs straight through the middle just doesn't work. And then bend the knee, bring it in towards your chest, use your abs and then step it through and take those blocks to the inside edge of your foot. Right knee resets. So setting into where you feel this opening in the front of your right hip. You'll probably feel it many different places. And hug your left knee in towards your elbow or to your shoulder. Intentionally breathing with Ujjayi. Ujjayi is so wonderful for heating you up from the inside out. If you'd like to go any deeper, just lower yourself down on the blocks. And climbing up if you're down on your blocks, backing up the hips, take the blocks back over to the right. Belly pulling in and then recentering your knee under your hip. Move the blocks to the side just for a moment and widen out your knees, tucking your toes and sitting back towards your feet. Then coming into an opposite movement with the wrist stretches, Take your fingertips so that they're facing your knees, your palms forward, and lightly press into the mat. Chest moving forward, kind of like when we're doing that cow pose. If you want to explore coming forward more, bringing your wrist down towards the mat, bring your shift forward. And if you want it any deeper, just sit back toward your feet. Check in with the neck, that the neck is staying loose. Peeling up your palm, pulling in your belly, kind of really pull that, feel that rounding like cat, and then untuck your toes. Take the blocks back to the top of your mat. You want to have maybe like eight inches apart and then widen out your knees and your feet as wide as your yoga mat or dragon pose. It's also known as dolphin prelude. Bring your elbows onto the blocks. 
and your hands more in a prayer position. You can lace up your fingers too. And sit back, not down, sit back. And then your head starts to come down towards the floor. It doesn't come all, have to come all the way down. In fact, if you have a lot of pinching in your shoulders, keep your head up a little bit more. Otherwise, start to relax into the chest, down towards the floor. Hands coming back behind your head. Lifting your head up, take your hands back up onto the blocks, move your blocks to the sides of your mat, knees come in, and then come down onto your belly. Widening out your legs almost as wide as the mat, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, so you use your glute muscles to kind of pull those sit bones and the tailbone towards your heels. Come over onto your forearms into sphinx. Shoulders come back, chest pulls through, and then lift through the chin. A little bit of head movement, looking from left to right. It sounds like gravel in my neck, in my head. <laughs> Does yours sound like that too, Jane? <laughs> and then release, come on down. Take a few deep breaths. Your hands underneath your shoulders, press up, tuck the toes, and you can either do puppy pose with your knees down, your elbows barely up off the floor, or come into downward facing dog, lifting up through your sit bones and stretching your heels down towards the mat. Low belly pulls in. You may even want to explore a little more of that pedaling undulation, kind of sweeping your hips from left to right, or just holding the pose still, what feels good. Keep listening inside to what your body wants. Knees coming on down. Reseat yourself. Come back into that crossing your legs shape and maybe sitting up on the blanket or on the bolster. Cross your right shin in front of your left shin. And lifting up tall, taking your right hand onto your chest. And use this as a reminder to keep breathing, lifting up through the heart, and then take your left arm and reach over to the right. And take some big breaths here. It's almost like we're about to do that spinal twist that we did earlier. Rotate your shoulders, twisting them to the right. Look over at your left hand. Then take your right hand onto the forearm or the elbow, turn your shoulders so that they're facing forward again, and keep drawing the arm over so you get a bigger stretch coming across your shoulders and your mid back. Your head now looking over your left shoulder.
your head coming back to center, right ear over, oh my goodness, right ear over, right shoulder. Keep drawing your left arm to the right as you're relaxing your neck. Dip your chin down towards the right shoulder, come across the chest and then bring your head back up, releasing your arm. Take a moment to feel. And then changing the leg position, keep your feet active, toes spreading. Lifting up through your chest, left hand on the heart. Right hand comes over, twisting over to the left while you're reaching. Feeling the different sensations. I can feel it a lot between my shoulder blades. The rhomboids there, the back ribs opening up, reaching out, looking at your right hand. I can also feel tension in my spine. It's kind of challenging without bringing your hand down for leverage, right? Left hand holds on to the right arm and then rotate your shoulders back into neutral. Keep pulling that right arm over to the left. Look to the right. Head comes back into center, neck release, left ear towards left shoulder, Ooh. right shoulder relaxes down away from the ear. Dip your chin down, look towards your left shoulder. And sweep it towards the center of your chest. Releasing your arm, bringing your head back up, and then rub your hands together. Once your hands feel hot, rub your neck. Palpate the top of your shoulders. Weaving the garden of tension in your shoulders. And then kind of sweep and brush it all the way down to your fingers and make your way over onto your back. Have a block close to you. We'll use that. Centering yourself here on your mat. Coming into a spinal twist. Left leg comes out, bring your right knee up, and then bring your arms kind of in a cactus goalpost position. When you exhale, shift to the outside of this left hip, coming across into a twist, and then take your left hand on your right knee. Looking opposite of your knee, look to the right. You can put this right foot up onto your thigh too. You can also use a block. If that feels a little unstable, choose a height to kind of perch your knee up onto. Left leg presses out, so this helps lengthen out your low back. Feel your tailbone reaching towards your left heel. Exhale, come on back in the center. You can assist this leg back in. 
and extend your right leg out. Press through the right foot, left knee comes up, back to the cactus goalpost arms, and shift all the way to over to the outside of the right hip, coming across with the left knee. With or without that support for your left knee, bring your right hand somewhere on the leg. The straight leg reaching away from your tailbone and looking over your opposite shoulder. And to support your left leg with your right hand, bringing your hips back onto the mat. Bending your knees, bring both feet down on the floor. A little bit of flowing bridge. Reach your hands towards your heels. Lift your hips to a little micro tuck so you lengthen up the low back. Inhale, raise your arms up. Hips come up. And exhale, floating back down to the floor. Inhale, press through your feet, lifting up. Exhale, coming back down. A few more times. When you come all the way back down to the floor, reach for one of your blocks, or if you have a yoga ball, you can bring the ball between your legs or a rolled up blanket, something where you're squeezing something between your legs. Interlacing your hands back behind your head. Plant down through your feet and turn your tailbone up towards the floor so your low back opens up and your low back presses onto the floor. And take in a long inhale while you're squeezing not only your inner legs, but squeeze your buns, squeeze your sit bones towards your tailbone. Exhale, curl your head and shoulders up, and then twist a little bit over to the left. Inhale, center your shoulders lower about halfway down. Keep squeezing the block. Exhale, curl up, and then twist a little bit over to the right. Inhale, center the shoulders, bringing the shoulders down. Keep squeezing block and your sit bones. Exhale, curl up and then micro twist over to the left. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, curl up and then twist over to the right. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, curl up and curl over. Inhale, center halfway down. And exhale, curl up, send the elbows up and twist over to the right. Inhale, come all the way back down and lengthen out your neck. Use your hands to kind of pull the neck open. And take a block or you can use a yoga ball, bring it under your sacrum, just above the tailbone, but not on your lower back vertebrae. Left knee towards your chest, right leg stretches out. So we're coming back into a similar feel to when we lunge, how we're opening up the front of the psoas and the hip flexors. These muscles, when they're really tight, they affect our posture. That's what's creating that feeling of rounding into your lower back is when these muscles get really tight. So this long muscle comes up and underneath your belly, attaches to the top of the diaphragm, also attaches this top thigh bone. So again, if you can kind of visualize when it's tight, it's pulling you forward or pulling you into that round position. So opening it up. It affects your breathing so as is amazing. It's such a big, strong muscle. And 
and then slide your right foot to the floor and switch out your legs. Right knee to the chest, left leg, stretching it out, flexing the foot. You can do this off the block too or off the ball. Bend your knee and bring both feet down. Baddhakonasana on the block. So knees open, feet together. Turn your tailbone up. And then bring your arms above your head or in that cactus position. Use your glutes to keep supporting your lower back. So we're opening up this whole inguinal area, inner thighs, inner groin. You want a little more strength building, press through the outer edges of your feet, maybe lifting your hips up off of the block. So you can use this as stretching or strengthening. If your hips are up, bring them back down, close out your knees, widen out the feet, and take the block out or the ball out. Tuck the tailbone up so you feel your belly dish down and come into back release pose. Right ankle up and threading the needle. You can bring this knee towards the chest. You could also extend the leg up, which can feel really good for hamstrings. Bending your knee if the leg is straight and switching out your legs. Coming into your back release variation on the second side. Either the knee stays bent. You can also do this with your foot on the floor and pressing through your arms. So continue to listen to your body. relaxation. Make yourself comfortable. If you want to bring yourself to a wall and bring your legs up the wall, please do. Something maybe underneath your knees or maybe a blanket over you. Make yourself very comfortable. Walking the shoulder blades down away from the neck, palms facing up. Little tuck up with the tailbone, squeeze the buns, and then let everything go. your whole body resting.
If you have a lot of time or some time and you'd like to stay longer, then please do. If it's time for you to make a shift, go ahead and come to the side and press yourself up. <clears throat> We'll be closing our practice with alternate nostril breathing, a pranayama practice, a breathing practice. So please sit up in a comfortable way. You may even want to bring your back up to a wall or put a blanket over your shoulders. Taking the breath out of the whisper, come back to breathing in and out of your nose in a way like you're smelling for something. And then use your right hand. Take the first two fingers, your peace fingers, tuck them down into your palm. You'll use the ring finger and the thumb. Closing your right nostril with your thumb. Tuck your chin down and keep lifting your chest up. Inhale through the left nostril. When you're full, close your nostrils, pinch them together. Use the ring finger and thumb. Open the right side, breathe out. Inhale, right side. Feel that long stream of breath coming up into your brain. Close. Exhale, left side. Adding a count. Breathe in through the left side, count to five. At five, be full. When you're full, close your nostrils, seal them, count to five. Exhale, right side for five. At five, be empty. Inhale, right nostril for five. Holding for five. Exhale, left nostril for five. Inhaling, left nostril, five. Close, hold for five. Exhale, right nostril for five. Inhaling right five. Pause for five. Exhale left nostril for five. And bringing your hands down into Anjali Mudra at the heart. Feeling. And closing your practice. If you want to bring in another moment fascinating on gratitude, what are you thankful for this morning or today? Namaste. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day.